Hi, I'm Sarah Fry. Welcome to Patent Pod. Today's episode takes place at the annual Governor's STEM competition, a competition that challenges student teams to research, design, and present a project that, it can, that can improve the lives of Pennsylvanians. Joining us to discuss the competition is the team advisor from East Stroudsburg High School, Jackie Edelbaum. Jackie, welcome. Thank you. Jackie, um, so I'm excited to have you here today. I want to just jump into what I thought was really interesting when I learned about your team. Is that you have an all-female team at the competition this year. We do. What, um, what, what's been that dynamic like? Has that, does that, it, does that, set them apart in some way? Is that played into the conversation at all? It, I think it makes us special in the fact that we're challenging norms. Um, it's been interesting too because it's four very dynamic high-level kids, students that they're also doing other stuff. So I'll be honest with you, today is the first day they all met as one group. Wow. It has been, they have been had separate parts, so it's been a challenge to have them all do their roles and work cohesively. But yeah, it, it, like I said, but they're very high achieving young ladies, so I can't be mad at that. So, but yeah, it's, I think being an all girls team, I think hopefully we can show that we got something to prove that girls belong in STEM programs. They belong, they belong here. Yeah, and you mentioned you mentioned that a little bit. Challenge that there's norms. Um, you know, it's there's been a lot of studies out there about the gender gap in STEM education and in the workforce. Do you, does that impact your students at all? Are they are that aware? Are they aware of that? Is that a conversation in the classroom for you? Not at all. I think I think it's seen in the classroom because you can you take those tech classes, those math and science classes, and they see that they are the minority. But I, you know how like. Growing up, my age group, it was girls can't do math and science kind of thing. And I was a tech girl, so I was in tech ed classes, the only girl in tech ed classes. Even in college, even going to college, like, you had to prove yourself, unfortunately. And that's the, I think that's the thing. Even though I think that conversation that they don't belong here is not there anymore, the dynamic is still there. It has done so much damage. And I hate to say it, but, like, they know that they have to be better to be even. And that's why one of the struggles it is being a tech person in STEM. Or like, or I mean a girl in STEM, or like, unfortunately they have to work harder to be considered the same as a, like a man. And then that's not something, something you teach, but you do kind of tell them that like, I know it sucks, but if you want to be seen, you want to be heard, you gotta be better than the boys. You got You gotta be better, and that's just, what it is unfortunately but like I said hopefully we break those barriers like we have two seniors on our team one is going to Scranton University for uh, biology and we'll, I have a, one going to Millersville where I went to and she's going to the tech engineering wow. so like they're going there they're breaking their barriers kind of thing what ideas or strategies do you have for educators about um, engaging more students and especially female students in STEM it's making it's making relationships, which is teaching in general. It's your relationships with kids, but also I think at East Strasburg North, I think we have great representation. I, our female teachers outnumber the males in both math and science. For tech ed, we have four tech ed teachers, two of them are female. So like we we are representing, and like we are so lucky too that we have the um, holy grail because we actually my colleague that's with me. She is a black tech ed teacher, so she's representing two minority groups, which you, you need representation. You need to see someone has done it before you, or like you gotta break barriers, but seeing someone before you makes it more commonplace that you're not the person that has to suffer so much kind of thing. But like I said, I don't think there's any strategies in the teaching per se, it's just more the relationship you build and they kind of see that yes. kind of thing. So we, you know, we, we talk about in education the concept of, of windows and mirrors, so that being able to mirror yourself, right? Yes. Mirror yourself in the classroom, mirror, um, see a mirror or image of your likeness uh, in the workforce. Yes. Uh, um, 
So you've been a part of the competition for a while now, right? This year. This is your first year. Technically, so I co-taught a freshman gifted seminar, and the young lady, uh, the person I co-taught with, love her to death, but she's a 20 tab open kind of person. So like, she never gave enough time for us to really do the project correctly last year. So we did, we did have last year. We okay. had a group of three freshmen, but this is the first year that I'm involved that I'm truly going. Yeah. So this is our, okay. my first year. Well, welcome. Having that um, kind of emer you know, emerging experience yes. coming into this fresh, what's been the most rewarding part for you as an advisor? I think it's, it's, it's that building the relationships. It's, it's, they're my girls. They're, it, you know, I have a school of 900 kids, but, you know, the whole, if I can make a difference in one person's life. So, like, those are my four girls. We make relationships. And it's, like, the one girl, senior, going to Millersville, I've had her since she was a freshman. And I actually, I made the club for her because I know she would be in it. I know she would excel in it. And I know it would help her get to college. And that's funny, like that's what I did. And then, like I said, one is like an Ivy League girl, and like it's nice with her have that relationship. It's like we have that banter, like still professional because I'm a teacher and stuff. But like, like she's she's she was a writer. She's our technical, like education educated person basically, or academic. That's the word I want. But um, and then we had a freshman. She would come to the meetings, and not talk and be. I'm like, sweetie, like you can join us, kind of stuff. But seeing her grow into a more confident young lady, and I have her in classes now too. And like we call her the freshman because like there's only so many skills a freshman has, but she's building those skills through classes and this. But what's funny is she came into the club thinking it was like experiments, like baking soda and vinegar. I'm like, oh no, we're like inventing something, guys. Like, yeah, we, we got this. <laughs> but like, but she's come to her own. And then another, another young lady, very high achieving young lady, and she's an academic well as well, which is nice to have. But like, she's a high achieving. She's a swimmer. She does all sports and stuff. But like, it's just nice that I was able to have a group of young ladies and help them grow in this particular little field, and seeing where they have come, how far they will go. Hopefully, like I said, they're they're following the STEM. Even like my my one is a tenth grader. She's gonna go to engineering. At least that's her goal right now. So like, you can mold them. <laughs> I, kind of think. I think it's interesting too that you, you um, something that I think is really special about the competition is, you know, there's not one type of student that engages. You mentioned uh, students with maybe different social uh, yeah. comfort levels of, you know, getting yes. involved in social uh, um, kind of conversations. Also from students that are really interested in sports or involved in a bunch of clubs. The Governor's Sim competition just brings interests and excitement and energy from so many different types of students here and I think that's you hit on that yeah. and I, I just want to reiterate that that's we definitely have the full gambit in our, our team yeah of the spectrum we'll say well Jackie I know it's a busy day for you we are on at states right now um, I want to make sure that you have time to get back with your team and and prepare for for their, uh, their presentation Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you, Thank you. at the competition. Um, for our audience members who might be interested in learning more about the Governor's Sim competition and getting involved, add either if you're in a school role and you want to bring a team, or maybe you're a community member and you'd like to be a guest judge, we have information for you linked in our show notes. I'd also like to thank our producer, John Ragsdale. Please, everybody, come back and join me at Pat and Pod soon. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.